Ashley Black Rain, Nora Roberts' book, Sea Swept, Chapter 10. She wasn't so bad for a social worker, Seth so came to this thoughtful conclusion about Anna after he retreated to his room unobtrusively to work on his anti-violence essay. He was drawing pictures instead, quick little sketches of faces. He had a stupid week to write a stupid thing, didn't he? Wouldn't take more than a couple hours once he got down to doing it, which was a raw deer all around, but better than letting fat-faced Robert get him suspended, he could still close his eyes and bring up the image of all three of the queens standing in the principal's office, all three of them standing beside him, facing down the all-powerful Moorfield. It was so cool, he decided and began to doodle the moment in his notebook. There! There was Philip in his fancy suit, with his hair just right and his kind of narrow face. It looked like one of the magazines ad ad Seth thought. The ones that sold stuff only rich guys could buy. Next he sketched an Ethan, all serious face. Seth mused, his hair a little shaggy, even though Seth remembered how he combed it just before they'd gone into school. He looked exactly like what he was, the kind of guy who made his living and lived his life outdoors. There was Cam, rough and tough, with that light of mean in his eyes, thumbs hooked in the front pockets of his jeans. Yeah, that was it, Seth decided. He must always stood, he must, he must always stood like that when he was ticked off. Even in the rough sketch, he came across as someone who done most everything and planned to do a whole lot more. Last, he sketched in himself, trying to see what others would see. His shoulders were thin and bony. He thought it was some disappointment, but they wouldn't always be. His face was too thin for his eyes, but it would feel out too. One day, he'll be taller and stronger, and he wouldn't look like such a puny kid. But he kept his head up, hadn't he? He hadn't been afraid of anything, and he didn't look like he'd just wandered in the picture. He looked almost like he belonged there. Messed with one Quinn, messed with them all. That's what Cam had said, and he must have meant it, because he wasn't a Quinn, Seth thought, frowning as he held up the sketch to study details. Or maybe he was. He just didn't know. It hadn't mattered to him if Ray Quinn had been his father, like some people said. All that it mattered was that he was away from her. It hadn't mattered who his father was. Still didn't. He assured himself. He just didn't give a rat's ass. All he wanted was to stay here. Right here. Nobody would used the back of his hand or the fist on him for months now. Nobody got blitzed out on drugs and laid around so long. So still, he thought they were dead. He secretly hoped they were. No flabby guys with sweaty hands tried to grope him. He wasn't even going to think about that. Eating crabs had been pretty cool, too. Good and messy. He remembered with a grin. You gotta eat them with your hands. The social worker didn't act all prim and girly about it either. She took off her jacket and rolled up her sleeves. Didn't seem like she was watching to see if he burped or scratched his butt or anything. She laughed a lot, he remembered. He wasn't used to women laughing a lot when they weren't coked up. That was a different kind of laughing, says Newt. Miss Smelly, Mrs. Spinelli's wasn't wild and hard and desperate. It was low and well smooth, he supposed. Nobody told him he couldn't have more either. Man, he'd beat... Man, he bet he ate a hundred of those ugly suckers. He didn't even mind eating the salad, though. He pretended he did. He hadn't had that gnawing sick feeling in his stomach that was desperate hungry for a long time now. So long he might have forgotten the sensation. But he hadn't forgotten. He hadn't forgotten anything. He worried some that the social worker would want to pull him back in. But she seemed pretty okay to him. And he saw her sneaking little bites of crab and bread to foolish. So she couldn't be all bad. But he'd have liked her better if she was a waitress or something like Grace. When the light knocked sound on his door, Seth slapped a notebook closed on sketches and quickly opened another, where the first dozen words of his 500-word essay were scrawled. Yeah? Anna poked her head in. Hi, can I come in a minute? It was weird being asked, and he wondered if she would just turn around and go. He said no, which I, I guess. I have to leave soon. She began taking a quick survey of the room. Twin bed. Expert Link made a sturdy dresser and desk, a wall of shelves that held a few books, portable stereo that looked very new, and a pair of binoculars that didn't. There were white mine mini blinds at the window and a pale green paint on the walls. It needed junk, she thought. A boy's junk, ancient broken toys, posters stacked to the walls. But the puppy snoring in the corner was a very good start. This is nice, she wondered the window. You got a good view, water and trees. You get to watch the birds? I bought a book of local wood. Waterfowl when I moved here from D.C. so I could figure out what was what. Must be nice to see air gets every day, I guess. I like it here. It's hard not to, huh? He shrugged his shoulders, took his caution. It's okay. Got no problems with it. She turned and glanced down his nose. 
The dreaded essay. I started it. Fitzley pulled the notebook closer. Not the other one onto the floor. Before he could snatch it up, Anna crouched down to pick it up herself. Oh, look at this. It had fallen open to a sketch of the puppy. Just his face. Straight on. She thought the artist had captured that silly and silly expression perfectly. Did you sketch this? It's no big deal. I'm working on the damn essay, aren't I? She might have sighed over his response, but she was too charmed by the sketch. It's wonderful. It looks just like him. Her fingers itched to turn the page. See who else Seth might have drawn. But she resistance at the notebook now. I can't draw a decent stick, man. It's nothing. Just fooling around. Well, if you don't want it, maybe I could have it? He thought it might be a trick. After all, she had her jacket back home, was carrying a briefcase. She looked like social services again rather than the woman who rolled up her sleeves and laughed. Over steam trap. What for? I can't have pets in my apartment. Just as well, she added, it wouldn't be fair to keep one closed in all day while I'm at work. But, then she smiled and glanced over the sleeping puppy. I really like dogs. When I can afford a house in a yard, I'm going to have a couple of them. But until then, I have to play with other people's pets. It seemed odd to him. Says mine, adults ruled often with an iron hand. Did what they wanted when they wanted to. Why don't you just move someplace else? The place I've got is close to work. The rent's reasonable. She looked toward the window again. To a sketch of land and water. Both were deep with shadows at night. Moving in. It has to do until I can manage to get the house in yard. She wandered the window, drawn to that quiet view. First star winked to life in the eastern sky. She nearly made a wish. Somewhere near the water. Like this. Anyway, she turned back and sat on the side of the bed facing him. I just wanted to come up before I left, see if there's anything you wanted to talk about, or any questions you wanted to ask me. No, nothing. Okay. She hadn't really expected him to talk so freely, yet. Maybe you'd like to know what I see here, what I think. She took his shoulder jerk as an assistant. I, sent a, I see a house full of guys who are trying to figure out how to live with each other and make it work. Four very different men who are bumping up against each other. And I think they're going to make some mistakes, most certainly irritate each other and disagree. But I also think they'll work it out, eventually, because they all want to. Chatter with an easy smile. If their own ways, they all want the same thing. She rose and took a card out of her brief. You can call me whenever you want. I put my home number on the back. I don't see any reason for me to come back in an official capacity for a while. But I may come back for a puppy fix. Good luck with the essay. When she started for the door, she says with one of home impulse, and tore out the sketch full of out of his notebook. You can have this if you want. Really? She took the page, beamed at God, he's cute. Thanks. He jerked back when she meant to kiss his cheek, but she brushed her lips across it lightly. Then straighten. Step back, ordering him so to keep an emotional distance. Say good night to Foolish for me. And it slipped the sketch in her briefcase as she walked downstairs. Bill was noodling at the piano, his fingers carelessly picking out some bluesy number. So another skill she envied. It was the constant disappointment to her that she had no talent. Ethan was nowhere to be seen, and Cam was restlessly pacing the living room. So she thought that, that might be a very typical overview of all three men. Phil. Flip, elegy, late while in a way that's time, Ethan off with some solitary pursuit of Cam, working off excess energy. The boy up in his room, drawing his pictures and thinking his thoughts. Cam glanced up when their eyes left the ball. He slammed into him. Gentlemen, thank you for a wonderful meal. Philip rose and held on a hand to take hers. We have to thank you. It's been too long since we've had a beautiful woman to dinner. I hope you'll come back. Oh, he's a snooze one. He's like, I'd like that. Tell Ethan he's a genius with crap. Good night, Cam. I'll walk you out. She counted on it. First thing, she said when they stepped aside. From what I see, Seth will first be seen, too. His proper supervision, a good home, sport with his school life. He could certainly use some new shoes, but I don't imagine there's a boy of ten who could it. <laughs> shoes. What's wrong with the shoes? <laughs> Regardless, she said, turning to him when they reached her car. All of you still have adjustments to make, and there's no doubt he's a very troubled child. I suspect he was abused physically. And perhaps sexually. I figured that out for myself, Kim said short. It won't happen here. I know that. She laid a hand on his arm. If I had a single doubt in that area, he wouldn't be here, Cam. He needs professional counseling. We all do. Counseling? That's crap. We don't need to pour out our guts out to, <laughs> out to some underpaid county shrink. <laughs> Many underpaid county shrinks are very good at their job, she said dryly. Since I have a degree in psychology myself, I could be considered an underpaid county shrink, and I'm good at mine. Fine. We're talking to him. You're talking to me. We've been counsel. 
Don't be difficult. Her voice was literally mild because she knew it was a spark of flash of annoyance in his eyes. It was only fair. She thought it was he in order. I'm not being difficult. I've cooperated with you from the get go. More or less, she mused. And continued to be fair. A minute. It was more than she expected. You've made a solid start here, but a professional counsel will help all of you get beneath the surface and deal with the root of the problems. We don't have any problems. She hadn't expected such hard line of resistance to such a basic step, but realized she should have. Of course you do. Seth's afraid to be touched. He's not afraid to let Grace touch him. Grace? Man pursed lips around. Grace Monroe? From the list you gave me? Yeah, she's doing the housework now. The kid's nuts about her. Might even have a little crush. That's good, that's healthy, but it's only a start. When a child's been abused, it leaves scars. What the hell were they... Yeah, what the hell were they talking about this for? He thought impatiently. Why were they talking about shrinks and digging at old wounds when all he wanted was a few minutes of easy flirtation with a pretty woman? My old man beat the hell out of me. So what? I survived. The hater remembered it. He didn't stand in the shadow of the house. Then in his own sanity, sanctuary and memory. The kid's mother knocked him around. Well, she's not going to get the chance to do it again. That chapter is closed. It's never closed. It's supposedly whatever new chapter you start always has some basis in the one that came before. I'm recommending counseling to you now, and I'm going to recommend it in my report. Go ahead. He couldn't explain why it infuriated him. Even to think about it, he only knew he, he'd be damned if he would ask himself or any of his brothers. Open those long locked doors again. You recommend whatever you want. Doesn't mean we have to do it. You have to do what's best for Seth. How the hell do you know what's best? It's my job, she said coolly now, because her blood was starting to boil. Your job. You got a college degree in a bunch of forms. We're the ones who lived it, who are living it. You haven't had, you haven't been there. You don't know anything about it. What's it like to get your face mashed in, but not be able to stop it? Do you have some bureaucratic jerk from the county who doesn't know dick decide what happens to your life? Didn't know. She thought of the dark, desert road, the terror, the pain, the screams. Can't be personal. She might have so. Thought her stomach was your opinion. My profession has been crystal clear since our first meeting. That's right, but I cooperated. I filled you in, and all of this took steps to make this work. His thumbs went into his front pockets, and a gesture said would recognize. It's never quite enough, though. There's always something else. If there weren't something else, returned, you wouldn't be so angry. Of course I'm angry. We've been working our butts off here. I just turned down the biggest race of my career. Got a kid on my hands who looks at me one minute if I'm an enemy, and the next is if I'm his salvation. Jesus Christ. Then it's harder to be his salvation than his enemy. Bullseye. He saw what's growing with that man. How the hell did she know so much? I'm telling you, the best thing for the kid, for all of us, is to be left alone. He needs shoes. I'll get him goddamn shoes. Then what are you going to do about the fact that he's afraid to be touched, even in the most casual way, but you or your brothers? Are you going to buy his fear away? He'll get over it. Camel's dug in now. A few so loud and pry him open. Get over it. A sudden fury had her almost shutting on the words. Then they poured out a hot stream that made a flash of pain in her eyes. All the more important. Because you want him to? Because you tell him to? Do you know what it's like to live with that kind of terror? That kind of shame? To have a bottle up inside you and have little drops of that poison spill out. Even when someone you love wants to hold you. She ripped open her car to toss her briefcase. I do. I know. It. Exactly. She grabbed her arm before she could get, get your hand off me. Wait a minute. I said get your hand off me. Because she was trembling he did somewhere during the argument. She got from being professionally irritated to being personally enraged. He had seen the shift. And uh, I'm not going to let you get behind the wheel of this car when you're this cheering up. I lost someone I cared about recently and I'm not going to let it happen again. I'm fine. Though she bit off the words, she followed them up by a long sitting breath. I'm perfectly capable of driving home. If you want to discuss the possibility of counseling rationally, you can call my office for an appointment. Why don't we take a walk? Both of us can go up. I'm perfectly cool. She slipped into her car, nearly slammed the door on his finger. You might take one, though, right off the dock. He cursed when she drove away, briefly considered, concerned, chasing her down, pulling her out of the car and demanding that they finish the damn stupid argument. His next thought was to stalk back into the house and forget it. Forget her. But he remembered the wounded look that had come into her eyes, the way her voice had sounded when she said she knew what it was like to be afraid, to be ashamed. Someone had hurt her. He realized, and then at that moment, everything else faded to the background. (sighs) 
Anna slammed the door of her apartment, yanked off her shoes, and heaved them across the room. Her temper was not the type that flashed and boiled and cold. It was a shimmering thing that bubbled and brewed, then sprued over. The drive home hadn't calmed her down at all. It had merely given her right set of motions enough time to reach a peak. She tossed her briefcase on the sofa, stripped off her suit jacket, threw it on top. Ignorant, hard-headed, narrow-minded man, she fisted her hands and ran them against her own temples. What had made her think she could get through to him? What had made her think she wanted to? When she heard the knock on the door, she bared her teeth. She expected her across the hall neighbor, wanted to exchange some little bit of new gossip. She wasn't in the mood, determined to ignore it so she could be civilized. She began yanking pins out of her hair. Now it came again, loud enough. Come on, Anna, open the damn door. <laughs> now she could only stare. A shock and fury made her ears ring. The man had followed her home. <laughs> he had the nerve to come all the way to her door and expect to be welcome inside. He probably thought she'd be so consumed with lust that she'd jump him and had wild sex on the living room floor. Well, he was in a surprise. All of his own. She tripped to the door, yanked him. You son of a bitch! Cam took one look at her flushed and furious face. Well, tumbling hair, the eyes that sparkled with vengeance, and decided it was undoubtedly preserved to find that arousing. But well, what could he do about it? And sat her clinched. Go away, anybody. But if you belt me, you have to write a 500 word essay on violence in our society. She made a low, threatening sound of her throat and tried to slam the door to his face. He was quick enough to slap a hand on it, strong enough to put his weight against it and hold him. I want to make sure. I wanted to make sure you got home all right. He began as they struggled with the door. As soon as I was in the neighborhood, I thought I should come up. I want you to go away, very far away. In fact, I want you to go all the way to hell. I get that before I take the trip. Give me five minutes. I've already given you what I now consider entirely too much of my time. So what's five more minutes? The settle he braced the door open with one hand, which she found air infuriated, stepped inside. If it wasn't for Seth, I'd call the cops right now and have your butt tossed in jail. He nodded. That was his share of fairies, woman. I knew there was a time to be careful. Yeah, I get that too. Listen. I don't have to listen to you. Using the flat of her hand, she shoved him hard in the chest. You insulted. You're insulting, and you're hard-headed, and you're wrong. So I don't have to listen to you. I'm not wrong, he tells her. You're wrong. I know. Every damn thing, she remember. You're dropping from bouncing around all over the world, playing hot shot daredevil, and suddenly you know everything about what's best for a 10-year-old boy. You know barely a month. I was not. Plain of being a hot shot daredevil was making a career out of it. He interrupted his poor best consolation and peacemaking shattered, but it's a goddamn good one. And I don't know what's, and I do know what's best for Gordon. I'm the one who's been there day and night. He spent a couple of hours with him, thinking you got a better handle on it. That's just bullshit. It's my job to have a handle on it. Then you should know that every situation is different. Maybe it works for some people to spill their guts to a stranger and have their dreams analyzed. He worked it out carefully, logically, on the way over. He was determined to be absolutely reasonable. Nothing wrong with that if it's what does it for you. But you can't rubber stamp this. You have to look at the circumstances and the personalities here and you know make adjustments. She couldn't get her breathing under control, so she finally stopped trying. I don't remember stamp the people I'm chosen to help. I study and I evaluate, and God damn you, I care. I'm not some bureaucrat jerk who doesn't know dick. I'm a trained caseworker with over six years' experience, and I got that training, that experience, because I know exactly what it's like to be on the other side, to be hurt and scared and alone and helpless, and no one else, and no one whose case is assigned to me is just a name on a form. Her voice broke, shocking her to silence. Quickly stepped back, pressed one hand to her mouth. She stepped back, pressed one hand to her mouth, holding the other up to signal him to away. She felt it rise inside her, knew she wouldn't be able to stop. Get out, Spence, get out of here now. Don't do that. Then it closed his throat as the first taut tears spilled down her cheeks. Furious woman, he understood. I can deal with the ones who wept this. Just sort of time out, foul. Jesus, don't do that. Just leave me alone. She turned away. They could only have escaped, but he wrapped his arm around her, buried his face in her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He had apologized for anything. He would have. He'd have apologized for anything. Everything. If only to put them back on even, even ground. I was wrong. I was out of line. Whatever you said. Don't cry, baby. He turned around, holding her clothes. He pursed his lips to her forehead. Her simple. Sand stroking her hair. Her back. His mouth was on her. Gentle at first to comfort and soothe. Why, 
continued to murmur, My eyes please and promises, but her arms lifted, wrapped around his neck, her body pressed into his, and her lips parted, heated. The change happened quickly, and he was lost in her, drowning in her. The hand that had stroked gently through her hair, now tangled in it, fisted as the kiss rushed towards Siri. Take me away. It was all she could think. Don't let me race it. Don't let me think. Just take me. She wanted his hands on her, his mouth on her. She wanted to feel muscles quivering with need under his fingers. With that strong, half-wild taste of his feeling her, she could let everything go. She trembled against him, shuddering in his arms, and the sound she made against his depth of her mouth might have been a whimper. Jerked back as if he'd been stuck. Those hands were completely steady, kept him on her arms. Kept her arms like, that wasn't, he had to stop, give himself a minute. His mind was mush, and it was unlikely to clear. Then she continued to look at him with those dark, Damn, eyes that were clouded with passion. I don't believe I'm going to say this, but this isn't a good idea. He ran his hands up and down her arms, though, as he struggled to hold on the control. You're upset, probably not thinking. He could still taste her. The flavor of his tongue had up. Right, his hunger staring in his mind. Christ, I need a drink. And the wood with both of them. She swept the back of her hand over her cheek to dry. I'll make coffee. I wasn't thinking about coffee. I know, but if we're going to be sensible, let's stick with coffee. She stepped into the kitchen area, kept herself busy with the homey process of grinding beans and brewing. Every nerve in her body was on edge. Every knee she ever had or imagined, everyone was brutally aroused. We finished that, Anna. You might have thought I used the situation. She not. Continued to fix her. Or I would have wondered if I had. Either way, bad idea. It's important to me never to make sex and guilt. She looked at him and then quietly looked. It's vital to me. And he knew, knowing, he suffered both a helpless rage and helpless pity. Christ, Anna, when? When I was twelve. I'm sorry. He <laughs> made him sick in his gut, in his heart. I'm sorry, he said again in adequately. You don't have to talk about it. That's where we disagree. Talking about it is finally what saved me. And he would listen, she thought, and he would know her. My mother and I had gone to Philadelphia for the day. I wanted to see the Liberty Bell because we were studying about the Revolutionary War in school. We had this clunker of our car. We drove over, saw the sights. We had ice cream, bought souvenirs. And, uh, her hand whipped up. Direct John, are you afraid to hear it? Maybe. He raked a hand through his hair. Maybe he was afraid to hear it. Afraid of what he would change between them. <laughs> Another roll of the dice, he thought. Then looks at her, but impatiently, and he understood he needed to know. Go ahead. Turning, she chose cups from the cabinet. It was just the two of us. It always had been. She got pregnant when she was 16 and would never say who the father was. Having me complicated her life enormously and must have brought her a great deal of shame and hardship. My grandparents were very religious, very old school. Anna laughed a little. Very Italian. They didn't cut my mother out of their lives, but my sense was that it made her uncomfortable to have more than a peripheral part in them. So we had an apartment about a quarter the size of this one. She brought the pot to the counter and poured the rich dark coffee. It was in April, on a Saturday. She was taking off work so we could go. We had the best day, and we stayed later than we planned because we were having fun. I was half asleep on the road on the ride back, and she must have made a wrong turn. I know we got lost, but she just choked about it. The car broke down. Smoke started pouring out from under the hood. She pulled over to the side, and we got out. Just started giggling. What a mess. What a fix. He knew what was coming. I was thinking, maybe you should sit down. No, I'm all right. She thought it was the radiator needing water. And it continued. Her eyes on focus as she looked back. She could remember how warm it had been. How quiet, how the moon had drifted in and out of the smoky-looking clouds. We were going to hike back to the closest house and see if we could get some help. Car came along, stopped. There were two men inside. And one of them leaned out and asked us if we had a problem. She lifted her coffee, sipped. Her hands were steady now. She could say it all over. All again and lived through it all again. I remember the way her hand squeezed mine. Clamped down so hard it hurt. Realized later that she was afraid. They were drunk. She said something about just walking down to her brother's house, that we were fine. But they got out of the car. She pushed me behind her. When the first one grabbed her, she yelled at me to run. But I couldn't, I couldn't move. He was laughing, pawing at me. She was fighting him. And when he dragged her off the road and pushed her down, I ran and tried to pull him off. But of course I couldn't. And the other man yanked me off and tore my shirt. Defenseless woman and a helpful child. Cam's hands fisted out of sight. It's both rage and impotence course through him. He wanted to go back to that night, that deserted road, and use 
and then use them viciously. He kept laughing, Anna said quietly. I saw his face very clearly for a moment or two, like it was frozen in front of my eyes. I kept hearing my mother screaming, begging them not to hurt me. He was raping her. I could hear him raping her, but she kept begging him to leave me alone. She must have seen that. That wasn't going to happen. She fought harder. I could hear the man hitting her, yelling at her, shut up. Didn't seem real. Even when he was raping me, it didn't seem like it could be real. Just an awful dream that went on and on and on. When they were finished, they stumbled back to the car and drove away. They just left us there. My mother was unconscious, beating her badly. I didn't know what to do. Said I went into shock, but I don't remember anything until I was in the hospital. My mother, my mother never regained consciousness. She was in a coma for two days. Then she died. Anna, I don't know what to say to you. What can be said to you? I didn't tell you for your sympathy, she said. She was 27, a year younger than I am now. It was a long time ago, but you don't forget. It never goes away completely. And I remember everything that happened that night. Everything I did afterward. After I went to live with my grandparents, I did everything I could to hurt them. To hurt myself. That was my way of dealing with what had happened to me. I refused counseling. She told him coolly. I wasn't going to talk to some thin-faced, dried-up shrink. So I picked fights, looked for trouble, found it. Had indiscriminate sex, used drugs, ran away from home. Butted up against the social workers in the system. She picked up the jacket, she tripped off her earlier and folded it neatly. Now, hated everybody. Myself, most of all, I was the one who had wanted to go to Philadelphia. That was the reason we were there. If I hadn't been with her, she would have gotten away. No, he wanted to touch her, but was afraid to. Not because she seemed fragile, she didn't. She seemed impossible. So, no, you are to blame for any of it. I felt the blame, and the more I felt it, the more I struck out at everyone and everything around me. Sometimes it's all you can do, you remember. Fight back, run wild, until you get it out loud. <laughs> Sometimes there's nothing to fight, nowhere to run. For three years, I used what happened that night to do whatever I choose. Sugar came again with a quick, ironic lift and fall around. I didn't choose well. That was a pretty tough cookie when I ended up in juvie. But my caseworker was tougher. She pushed and prodded, and she hounded me because she refused to give up on me. She got through. Because my grandparents refused to give up on me, I got through. Carefully, she laid the jacket back over the arm of her. It could have been different. I could have stayed just one more failed statistic in the system. But I didn't. He thought it was amazing that she had turned a horrible horror into such a strength. She was amazing. She was in work that would have to remind her daily. Would have ripped her life apart. And you decided to pay it back to go into the kind of work that had turned you around. I knew I could have helped, and yes, I did that the same way you feel you are one. I survived, she said, looking him dead in the eyes. But survival wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for me or for you, and it won't be enough for Seth. One thing at a time, he murmured. I want to know if they caught the bastards. No, she long ago learned to accept and to live with that. It was weeks before I was coherent enough to make a statement. I never caught them. The system doesn't always work, but I've learned, and I believe it does its best. I've never thought so, and this doesn't change my mind. He started to reach out, hesitated, then tucked his hands in his mouth. I'm sorry. I heard you. I said things that made you remember. It's always there, she told him. You cope and you make a side for long periods of time. It comes back now and again, because it never really goes away. Did you have counseling? Eventually, yes, I she broke off. All right, I know I'm, I'm not saying counts the works, miracles, scams. I'm telling you, it can be helpful. It can be healing. I needed it, and when I was finally ready to use that help, I was better. Let's do this. He did touch her now. He just laid a hand over hers on the counter. We'll leave it as an option. Let's see how things go. All around. See how things go? She said she tried to argue. Her head aches, and her body felt hollow out and fragile. I agree with that, but I'll still, rec I'll still recommend counseling in my report. Don't forget the shoes. He said dryly, and was fast relieved when she laughed. I won't have to mention them, because I know you'll have them at the store by the weekend. We can call it a compromise. I seem to be getting better at them lately. Then you must have been incredibly off steep before. I think the word my parents used was bullheaded. It's comforting to be understood. She looked down at the hand covering her. If he asked to stay, I couldn't say no. I want to stay. I want you. But I can't ask tonight. 
bad time and all around. She understood how some men felt about women who'd been sexually attacked. So I could tease into hard knocks, but it was best to know. Is it because I was raped? He wouldn't let it be. He refused to allow what had happened to her affect what would happen between them. It's because you couldn't say no tonight. Tomorrow you might be sorry you didn't. Surprise, she looked up at him again. You're never quite what I expect you to be. It wasn't quite what he expected either. Not lately. This thing here, whatever it is, isn't quite what I expected it to be. How about a Saturday night date? I have a date Saturday. She first cursed little bit. She, her lips curved slowly. The knots in her stomach had loosened. She hadn't even been aware of it. But I'll break it. Seven o'clock. He leaned across the counter, kissed her. Lingered over it. Kiss her again. I'm going to want to finish this. So am I. Well, he heaved a sigh and started for the door. Well, he was sure he could. I was going to make the drive home easier. He paused her around. He said you survived, Dana, but you didn't. You triumphed. Everything about you is a testament to courage and strength. When she stared at him, <laughs> he, stunned. he smiled at a little. You didn't get either from a social worker or a counselor. That just helped you figure out how to use it. I figured you got it from your mother. She must have been a hell of a woman. She was. And a murmur next to your tears again. So were you. Came close the door quietly behind him. Decided he would take his time driving home. He had a lot of stuff to think about. End of chapter 10.